Now, I'll admit at the start of this video that I'm not exactly the biggest Sasha Banks fan. I just... I've tried to see the appeal in the past, tried to get interested in her shtick and her gimmick and her performance style, and it's just really not for me. And, and that's okay. Like, if she's for other people, that is perfectly fine. Let me be clear. We don't all have to like the same wrestlers. And it is really hard to ever find anybody that all wrestling fans unite behind really, really like it. Even some of the all-time icons and legends. There are people that don't like Flair. Certainly people, obviously, that don't like Hogan. There are people that don't like The Rock very much, or Austin, or Taker, or Sting, or any number of guys. That, and, and that happens, and that's okay. Again, that's why variety is so important in wrestling. You want to have something for everyone. But potpourri, variety, spice, it's okay. So I don't have to be big time into Sasha Banks for her to be able to appeal to other folks. And if they view her as a star, I think they're mistaken. But that, that's whatever. That's, that's their enjoyment of professional wrestling. Perhaps your enjoyment of professional wrestling, that is perfectly fine. But on the, on the one hand, while I've never gotten the appeal fully and looking at her over the past couple of years I, I just see more things that kind of irritate me about her and annoy me about her as a performer as a character uh, than things that I could really get behind or really like or enjoy or appreciate I, I gotta say like I gotta take this opportunity to I don't know if it's defend her but kind of sanity check here it, it's it's why would anyone take Sasha Banks seriously anymore. Why would you? Now you could say, hey, her best friend on camera has been reigning SmackDown Women's Champion for over 300 days. She's been associated with that. She's the Women's Tag Team Champion. And all this other stuff. Okay, well that's cool. But why would we take anybody seriously when, on the one hand, they've won the Women's Championship multiple times? What is it, five times now? Whatever it is. And they either do it on a Raw or a SmackDown or on a pay-per-view. And then they turn right around either the very next title defense on, on a TV show or certainly at a pay-per-view. They just turn right around and lose it. Who the hell thinks that's a good idea? Who thinks that's smart? Who thinks that's anywhere close to ideal character development, progression, or growth? Who's booking this crap? I mean, we know the answer. And because we know the answer, we know it is crap. But why would you do that to any talent? That just makes absolutely no sense to me. Why would any fan want to get behind that character where she might actually win that title match and the next time around she's just going to turn around and lose it anyways? Like the ultimate of transitional champions is what Sasha Banks is. And, and, and I don't get where they think this is smart, where they think this is good storytelling, because this isn't even a thing of Sasha Banks getting to title matches and failing to get the job done. Like, at least you could tell some type of, you know, struggle overcoming the odds and obstacles and coming this close type of story with her. You can't do that with her, though. Because when you think about it from a sports sense to carry it over to wrestling, she's won a women's championship multiple times. So she has climbed the mountaintop, so to speak. But as soon as she gets on top of the Mount Everest of the ladies... She immediately goes tits over tea kettle the other side of the damn mountain. She can't stand the summit for any length of time whatsoever. Like this is to be about as stupid as thinking in the NBA, LeBron James making it to eight straight NBA finals grew his appeal, even though he lost <laughs> five of those eight appearances and 
six out of nine total if you go back to his 07 run with the Cavs. Like, yeah, he was in the finals every single year from 2011 to 2018. And he certainly won some titles there, yes. Won him back-to-back at 12 to thir and 13. But he also lost to Dirk and a team full of role players in 11. Lost to Kawhi and aging Duncan and Ginobili and Parker in 2014. In 15, when he goes back to the Cavs, they lose to the Warriors. In 16, they were down 3-1 to one in the series, and they come back and win. In part, though, because of Kyrie putting up 40-plus at Game 7. And then he loses the next two years because Durant bitches out and he goes plays for the Warriors. So, yeah, LeBron made it to eight straight NBA Finals. Cool. Nice feat. But you'd probably like to win more than three out of those eight series, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, it's one thing the dude's always in the picture. But at some point in time, it actually starts to hurt his legacy a little bit. Because now you're talking about... He's jumped from super team to super team to da 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 and he's got three rings out of it. Like when the going gets tough, he gets going, and he takes his ball and goes elsewhere, which he has certainly earned the right to do and is empowered to do so. That's fine. But I can't imagine creating some type of narrative around him that makes those finals losses really make him appeal more and build his legacy more. If anything, they hurt his legacy, and not just by a little bit, quite a bit. Quite a bit. But it's like the WWE is creating this weird, funky story with Sasha Banks that she can't retain that title. Not that she can't be beaten when she has a title. Not that she just can't win the title. Either one of those could potentially be way more interesting and compelling stories. Instead, this story is, she'll win a belt and drop it. Win a belt and drop it. Win a belt and drop it. Meanwhile, Bailey gets one consecutive run of 300-plus days. And I don't see what the hell appeal is there. And certainly isn't that much better than Sasha Banks to where one deserves 300-plus days, and this one can't hold it for 30. You wouldn't be doing that all the damn time with Charlotte Flair. And especially when you look at it, every time you turn around, something's up with her. She's popping an implant or getting some other type of injury. Like when they put the belt on Charlotte Flair, they actually pretend like they give a crap about Charlotte Flair. This time, they put the belt on Bailey. They gave a crap about Bailey. They sure as hell threw everything behind Becky Lynch. The only reason she's not a champion now is because she decided she wanted to get moo mooed by Seth Rollins. Congratulations. More power to you. But fans can take those ladies seriously because the WWE positions them in a way to where they can be taken seriously. I can't imagine sitting there and bitching and pissing and moaning about, what is it, a five-time women's champion not being able to be taken seriously or credibly in any way, shape, or form. But that's exactly what Sasha Banks is like, even on Raw on Monday. After she's lost the strap, you know, she's still kind of somewhat doing the bossing. Like, you should be pissed. You should be pissed. And even the way they booked that finish in the match on Sunday. They didn't even have a do it where Bailey tried to interfere and screwed her up. No, they didn't even do that. Bailey actually did interfere and then Sasha screwed up. Whereas earlier on in the week, Sasha was making Asuka tap. What the hell are we doing here? So why would anybody get behind that character? Why would anybody take her seriously? Why would anybody look at her and say, that's somebody I want to get emotionally invested in? Why? Because everything you do with her never goes anywhere. Hence, she's still aligned with Dan Bailey after all this time. These past couple of years, every time I've taken a break from watching for a month, two, maybe three. When I leave, they're together. When I'm back, they're together. It's astounding. I would be less surprised if you told me they were in some type of lesbian love tryst at this point than I would if you told me Sasha Banks was going to win a strap and just immediately drop it. Again, who is that appealing to? How does that make anybody a star? Part of making somebody a star is when they are champion, 
They are a BFG, big freaking girl. Supposed to be BFD, but I went BFG, and I tried to play around it, and it only kind of half-ass worked. See, that's why O'Hare Essential is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. But seriously, you see how they feature Bailey to a somewhat larger degree. And then certainly Charlotte and Becky Lynch to infinitely larger degrees. It's like they just want to waste time with Sasha Banks. And when they get bored, they put the belt on her just to drop it immediately. And that just makes no sense. I certainly don't look at her fragile ass and think that she's somebody that you would build an entire division around, but you put her in that position that many times that at some point in time, you might as well have fallen through and fell through and seen what the hell you got with it. There's absolutely no reason to take her seriously at this point. You see other women's wrestlers now on that company, such as Natalia, and you think she's a joke. She is. But Sasha's the bigger joke because every time she wins a strap, she immediately loses it. Why the hell would anybody think that she's somebody to be taken seriously? Come on!